one up, just one, and say he was a positive. Um, best friend, now that we're live, yes. doing the Good Morning Poetry live show tonight, late night, humor show, live, would you care to come up and join Thank me on this? Friend. Thank you. Everybody, give Jake Kennedy a welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Guests tonight. I'm going to get to it as soon as I just, there's just one or two monologue jokes that I have, and then we're going to do some of the gags. Um, yes, and this is going to be a, a spooky night. We have our first guest and then our second guest, and, other guests, and then we're going to have a prize giveaway. How's it going? I'm doing very well. I was just talking to your mother in law. Oh. And, yeah, and, and other members of your family, and very, I've been having a very good week. That is exciting to hear. Yes. Did you know that the entire uh, audience is my family? Did, did you yeah, know I that? That. yeah, I believe that. Yeah, yeah I believe that. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah, I believe that. You're doing so wonderful. I've had a lot of kissing, if that's why. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's not at all where I was going. I thought you were going to ask me. Did you do a little kissing? A lot of kissing. A lot of kissing. I haven't had a lot of kissing in a year. With a person? This kissing was with a person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, that's right. Oh, wow. How did it, how did it feel? Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. It is Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. And I had a whole litany full of <laughs> jokes that were, and then I, we decided not to do them because it is, I'm not a spaniel and it would be the terrible, uh, you know, politically incorrectness for me to just appropriate somebody else's holiday for the ha-has of the hoo-hoos. <laughs> exactly. So Cinco de Mayo, respect to the cult, no jokes, just celebrate it as people will. Thank you. Yesterday, you know what yesterday was? May the 4th be with you. Yeah, and then tomorrow is Revenge of the 6th. Is that right? Or today is Revenge of the 5th. I think today should be reserved for the Intergalactic Day of Speech Impediment Awareness. You have to know Star Wars to get that joke. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a not made for TV movie, and it's full of aliens, legal aliens. I said I wasn't gonna crack any. I'm sorry, Spain. The name of this game is judge the book by its cover. So then you just judge the book by its cover. And somebody voluntarily shouts out their judgment, and I tell you if you're right or not. It sucks. <laughs> Howie, how did you, you didn't even let me finish explaining the rules. The book sucks or the game sucks? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are you suggesting it's both, Howie? No. <laughs> He's just saying it could be. Yeah. Oh, I didn't hear the may or the yeah, could. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, uh, the book is called A Touch of the Poet, and, and Howie, you didn't get to see the back. Oh, I take it back. It, no, that's fine. Your judgment does not stand? <laughs> yeah, well, it was a preemptive judgment. It was a prejudgment. Pre prejudgment. Yeah. Okay, well, what is, your, what is your judgment now? Can you see the author there? Uh, Eugene O'Neill with his face? Yeah. Don't judge him. Judge the cover. No, oh, it's nice. It's uh, the writing's all centered on the back. You saw that. That's helmetic. Well, what what is your judgment now of it? Uh, it's pretty okay. Well, I'm gonna give it to you anyway because your first judgment was correct. Oh, well, ready? Yeah. We'll be right here in any back in any second. And now a word from our sponsors. Rage against the dying of the light. Wild men who caught and sang the sun in flight and learned too late. They grieved it on its way. Do not go gentle to that good night. Brave men, near death, who see with blinding sight. Blind eyes could blaze like meteors and be gay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. And you, my father, there in the sad height, curse, bless me now with your fierce tears, I pray. Do not go gently to that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. 
thought. What does that poem mean to you? It means oh. I don't take shit for <laughs> We've got one more Judge of Bookwise cover giveaway prize. Uh, this one is called the Tristram Shrindy. <laughs> yes! Uh, Sounds uh, like you. Is, I love that book. <laughs> Are you just giving that away? Hey, is that Taylor? No. Because no. I will... Not that. <laughs> Come on, that is not what that gesture is. Is that what it is? No, do this. You know, everybody's against me tonight. This is crazy. All right, this is what the front looks like. Very plain, no splashes of the color. It's monochromatic, gray, and black and white. And this is the back side. Here's the spine side. All right, who's ready to judge this book by its cover? I love that book. Wait. It's black and white, I love it. <laughs> what word would you use to describe the, the love that you have for it? Old-fashioned. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I just got chills. <laughs> Not up and down my spine, just up. And they're stuck. <laughs> oh. um, would you care to come claim your prize for judging it so accurately? <laughs> She's already got a copy. You need to throw it. <laughs> okay, well, you can give it away if you still want it. You're saying you just don't want to come forth and claim it. Is that... That's correct. Are you ready? Yeah. Don't be your mother-in-law. Okay, okay. Well, <laughs> Cindy Duck. Okay. <laughs> oh. how long it is and how many people we can divide this among. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought it was more passive around it. Okay. Say something that is going to... Just do me a favor. Just pause it. Just see our, our first guest. Uh, she has traveled a long ways to, to come and hang out with us tonight and answer our questions. Um, she's going to she's gonna address our concerns about poetry and what it means to be a canine poetry. And uh, please put your... Uh, pause together and welcome Deja to the stage. Uh, come on, Deja. We got some questions. Deja. Okay, I'm not going to say it.
question was just about if you had itch. <laughs> <laughs> just if you had a favorite. Just, just, she was just listening. Yeah, she just if you had a favorite um, dog poet or a favorite poet that that wrote poems about a dog. I'm sorry for touching. <laughs> fictional beast that you like to, like, are you a fan of Marmaduke, or is Odie your kind of underdog, <laughs> or do you like, do you enjoy Beethoven's movies? <laughs> <laughs> you got another question? Okay, uh, I'm fine. <coughs> um, Deja, when uh, K-Mac and I were at um, this uh, conference at the uh, University of Buffalo, there was all this discussion about uh, was metonymy subcategory of metaphor or was it its own kind of condition and like figure of language I just wondered if you had any opinion <laughs> Everybody prepared? Yes. yes. Okay, this okay. Time, do you have a timer device? 
Yes, I do. Restaurant Get that time. set up. Where are you yeah. doing your job? How much time would you like? Restaurant on the clock. One minute. That's all he gets. Okay, one minute. Are you ready? I am ready. He's not ready yet, so. Hold on one you second. Got, you got time Stop to watch. continue to being ready. Are you, I'm going to give you the stage spotlight. Are you ready, Levon? Levon. 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 Levon, go for it. Two words. Two words. Two words. Tall. Oh. Oh, right Space needle. Let's <laughs> go. Damn. 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 <laughs> so Levon wins. Yeah, he's good. You got 30 seconds left. You got, how do you know? You got 40 seconds. She has to answer. Hey, Dave, come on. Come on, don't be so rude. Me again. What is that? Is that Levon? It is. Well, c could you Why be not? willing to? All right, come on up, Levon. Let's give Levon a round of applause. Oh, what a unbelievable! All right, sir. Fantastic. Thank you for coming today. I can't believe you know how to do Shakespeare. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. That's my phone. Do you want to answer it? Do you want to answer it? Do you want to answer it? Okay. Hey man, what's up? I'm sorry, Levon. Oh, I didn't even think about that, but like. Yeah. Here, one sec, bud. It's just a guy. Pardon me? This is Kevin. Is this Demon? How's it going? Ask him if he saw the Rangers game today. Do you see the Rangers game? It's there's an after game party at the house. <laughs> I can't wait to meet you. Face the real face time, and we're gonna have a, just a gayo time when you get here. <laughs> I can't. I'm looking forward to that. Oh. Oh. You ready, Bronson? Yeah, let's do it. No, I'm not gonna do it. I know you would. Uh, take care, and I love you. Let's just see you one day. Sorry about that. Uh, so from Henry the Fifth, Henry V, Henry V, Revenge of the Fifth. That's right. And uh, it's appropriate for the day. You probably find that all out. Um, yeah, you asked me to do something that either had to do with feces what? or food. No. <laughs> I have no part. Um, I'm going to have you read the first four lines from this character in the last one. I'm not ready for this. I didn't prepare. 
prepare. You didn't tell me I would have a... It's all right. The words are right here, man. You can do it better than that. <laughs> You're my cousin. Okay. That's your motivation. Okay. <laughs> okay, I can't wait. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. to die, the fewer men, the greater share of honor, and if to live, God's will I pray thee not one man more. Rather proclaim it, Westmoreland, through my house, that he that outlives this day, I'm asking you, I'm rather proclaim it, Westmoreland, through my house, that he that happened <laughs> not the stomach for this fight, let him depart. His passport shall be made, and coins of conduct put into his purse. For we would not die in that man's company that fears his fellowship to die with us. He that, oh, the, today, today is the feast of Christians, and he that outlives this day to old age will yearly, on the vigil, rouse him at the name of Christian. He that outlives this day will, will yearly, on the vigil, feast his neighbors, and say, Tomorrow is St. Crispin's. And then will he strip his sleeve and show his scars, and say, These wounds I had on Crispin's day. Then shall our names, familiar in uh, their mouths as household words, Harry the King, Bedford and Exeter, Warwick and Talbot, Salisbury and Gloucester, be in their flowing cups freshly remembered. Old men forget, yet all shall be forgot, but he will remember with great advantages what he did that day. <sighs> From this day until the ending of the world, that we in it shall be remembered. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers, for he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother. Be he ne'er so vile, this day shall gentle his condition. And gentlemen in England, now abed, shall think themselves accursed they were not here, and hold their manhood's cheek whilst any speaks that fought with us upon St. Crispin's day. All right, thank you so much for that. We've got a prize present for you. It is the BBC Shakespeare Double Triple Disc Edition of the VHS. Check, check it out. You can watch it on your vicar. And that is the Shakespeare Television BBC play, Titus. And drawn Andronicus. Thank you. That's a good one. That's a keeper. <laughs> That's a keeper. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay, now the person who it was pointing at is now pointing at Taylor. Um, <laughs> Taylor. Everybody, please welcome Taylor to the Taylor. stage. Tristan Shandy. Yeah, you like that? It's nice and big and thick. And I don't know, 
deserves to be. You don't like to keep it in the air as long as you can. You like to get it as far away from you as possible. Yeah, I like to like uh, with a group of friends. We like to pass it around. Yeah, yeah. Give, give, give away. Pass, pass. I don't like to hold it. At all. No. Uh, no, it's like a hot shanty, hot shanty. <laughs> to the special features live poet commentary for tonight's episode of Good Morning Poetry episode. Um, this is the, the portion of the episode where we invite some poets to share their reflections on, on the shenanigans that we shared during this episode. I'll just uh, introduce a few of them right now and let them say their hellos. Uh, we've got Margaret, Margaret A. Where here. are all Hi. the souls? We've also got, I call him BB, brother, Bill Bissett. He's, he's going to stick around with us for a while. Hi, Bill. How are you doing? I really thought that I was doing something. Right, of course. Of course you would, Bill. Now, unfortunately, Marcel has to go right away, but he just wanted to get his, you know, his little bits in right off the start of the so i'm just gonna let him have a few few words and then he's got a bicycle off to his next gig so marcel duchamp you got unfortunately people today especially the, the layman or the the, the public wow. wants something yeah. that he please that pleases him right and that's taste and there's uh, there are okay. all kinds of three forms of it bad good and indifferent <laughs> So I'm on the indifferent taste uh, boat. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one, sir. Uh, charming as always, Marcel. I don't really understand at all what it is you're, you're talking about, but um, I'm, I'll have to ask you to clarify at a later date. Thanks for joining us, and, and uh, take care. Take care. Maybe, maybe Bill, uh, could you respond to Marcel's? idea maybe help me help me understand okay, so, uh, what it is he's desperately trying to communicate any, any ideas Thanks, Bill. Thanks for that clarification. I understand now. It's all about the ketchup that ties us and binds us and 
sticks us together. It's perfect and wonderful. Um, I was wondering if we could just cut into the episode for a second to hear Miranda's words so that we can all properly respond to their their zany zip zap -ness. Yeah? You told me of what may, the possible, the what, might, how, why, when stuff. She told me of the council. She told me of the energies, the light beings, the intention of transformation. She told me the stuff of fairies and hippies who smoked or took too many. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret, do you have any voiceover commentary you'd like to share in response to Miranda's words there that she's, she's got? Hmm. These people are quite different. They're, oh. they're trying to meld science, religion, and nature. Right. And therefore they have their own theology, which mm. the hippies didn't really quite have. And my group has their own um, list of saints. Mm. Uh, Am I, are you, are you suggesting, Margaret, that, that I'm one of the saints then in your list there? It's me? Well, individual people too. Yeah. Okay. And of course, what's really going to make the difference um, is the decision of governments. So oh. individual opinions have to somehow get to the point where they're moving government action. We are, we do have Copenhagen coming up. Right. Let's see how people do. I don't. There. You mean oh, poets? Very, very oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so harsh. That's harsh. You've just scared Miranda off the stage. Oof. Ryan is still here and interested, and we could ask her a question. Well, I, <laughs> it's kind of funny. I remember when this happened in the episode, uh, when Ryan came up, I thought there was going to be a huge, you know, bloody attacking snarfle of a dog and artist because Deja hates people who, who aren't afraid of dogs. Those are the only people she'll attack. If she senses that you're totally afraid, she'll actually lick you and give you a bit of a uh, lower back massage and um, even give you money sometimes just to, to encourage friendship. But, but if, you, if you say that you like dogs, oh, oh, she hates it. That's her, that's her pet peeve. It's one of her peeves about being a pet. Um, oh, it, it looks like there's somebody... Sounds like there's somebody at the studio door. Uh, let me just go, excuse me for a second, I'm just going to go check and see who it is. I don't know who it could be. Uh, let me see. Best friend. No way, it's best friend! Oh, best friend, I'm so excited Tons. you could make it. I thought I thought you were going to be out of town for the recording session commentary uh, time. I, uh, a moose I, uh, is a reprimand to the forest awe. Uh, falling leaf as if value adheres only in stillness and the tiny. The moose typically shits atop the glass lake. A moose is a hairdo covered in candelabra webs. Right. Oh, I see, best friend. Um, you're in that kind of a mood. Well, maybe you'd want to stick to stick to the episode and just uh, let, let the watchers know you know, how you felt during this particular segment when we were interviewing Ryan Robson, there, the artist. Any any thoughts? Any thoughts on that moment, particularly, in particular? I'm going to ask you, because uh, you know her as Miranda, sometimes I think of her as Marilyn, <laughs> which is sitting up here. Yeah. Uh, but Miranda, <laughs> she had a line where she said, I think it was something like uh, creation without purpose. Is that right? Huh? I mean, Marilyn, of right? creation without purpose. Yeah. Uh, of creation without purpose? Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, uh, Ryan, does that speak at all to how you make these things? Do you, are you working a little bit not knowing what you're doing, or...? Um, yeah, I suppose so. I mean, I just sort of... Oh, I don't know if you remember. You probably remember better than I do, Bestie, but her answer, her response to your the question you just posed there, so insightful and, and, and of in the moment. It was like a... A light of glory shining its epiphany rays on my eyeballs 
And uh, was that the same for you? Do you do you remember? Is it so? Um, yeah. So I I tried to uh, take on some ideas of what? some hokey ideas like loneliness and whatever, but try to find some Sounds, or suffering or something. Try to find some comparable images. To sounds work like those. you're making it a lot about your yourself or work about yourself. There, it's weird, bestie. And my my life is exceeding. Oh. So it was the only way to breathe. Um, BF, did you just say it was the only way to breathe? Or the only way to breathe? It was a little bit un unclear, a little bit muffled, and I just wasn't sure it could, it could really change how someone might take that idea. Marcel Duchamp said this thing about the ready mates where he tried to. He knew he'd found the object when it didn't really appeal to him uh, on any sort of aesthetic level, so you would choose a shovel or a bottle dryer or you know, something like that to, to lay claim to as a, as a piece of art. And so I think I was motivated a little bit by that, so I was thinking about things like claw hammers and cat piss and things that, that may not necessarily uh, reek of the aesthetic or something. So and gone to the front and received, uh, I believe, a shrapnel wound to the head, but uh, in, in my mind, I'd kind of turned it into him being, being shot in the, in the head. And, and we were just thinking about some of his uh, wonderful work, which like is so modern, modern, but uh, okay. also his yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. well, well, Which is what he's doing. Right? Well, we can you go out and say, you know, I'll switch the show. It's a hot family now. It's a hot family now. Wow, okay, well, thank you to my guests for being so together and uh, joining me on this commentary. I return now to the episode, and thank you all. Have a great night. This is enough for me. Do you have a question for Deja? Mm. Oh, God, She's an artist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she does some little bit of painting. She mostly does textile work with fur. <laughs> she is nude. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> That's right. Do you have a closing question? You don't have to. You can say no. You don't have to.